Eight uh, twenty here, Big Five Fifty KTRS. Well, it's uh, almost uh, an hour, uh, almost twenty four hours ago, uh, yesterday. Uh, Tom Schweik uh, took his own life, but before moments before he took his own life, he left this voicemail message for the editorial page editor of the St. Louis Post Dispatch, Tony Messenger. Tony, it's a Tom Schweik calling. Um, you can have a reporter here at uh, my house at two thirty. Uh, I'm willing to speak to both the Post Dispatch and to the AP only about this matter. Uh, I would give a brief prepared statement, which we would videotape. Uh, and then I uh, can answer questions from your reporter. Um, this is uh, only for you two, and I hope you'll not make it known that I'm doing this. Uh, but give me a call and let me know uh, if you can have somebody here at 2.30. Uh, to me, this is more of a religion story than a politics story, uh, but it's your choice on who the reporter is. Thanks. Bye-bye. Uh, moments later, a 911 call went out, and now we know that uh, Tom Schweik took his uh, own life. Tony Messenger joins us now. Tony, you find yourself in a very difficult situation covering a story and actually part of being the story. Tony, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you there? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not something that any journalist particularly likes, uh, being part of the story in some capacity, but... Uh, there, there's just no way to, to avoid it in this situation. So, um, trying to do my job as a journalist and uh, and and still pass on the information that I know. Yeah, no, and I, I think it is uh, really the only thing you could do was just sort of, which is what I think you're doing is you've just sort of released everything you think is, is is pertinent and everything that is pertinent and everything that is more or less on the record and just let the facts go where they go. Yeah, uh, I, I was telling a journalist friend of mine last night, I did something that uh, I've never done before. I, I, I typed out a statement for my uh, news editors and, and reporters. You know, I mean, the, the other thing that complicates it is I'm, I'm not a news reporter. I'm the opinion page editor. And, uh, and you know, we have a wall between what we do on the editorial page and what they do in the news department. So uh, in this case, I've... I've they knew that I had information that uh, uh, was pertinent. I mean, the, the way it happened, that's just interesting dynamic-wise, um, I, I texted Tom back about 11 o'clock when I was done speaking at the Rockwood Career Day and told him I'd you know, make sure a reporter was there. The newsroom didn't know anything about this. Tom had been talking to me and talking to David Lieb, uh, who also outlined... Uh, similarly to me, the information that, that Tom had shared with him in an AP story. And uh, so I went to the newsroom when I got back uh, about, I think it was about 11.30, and found an editor and said, I got a news story for you, and, you know, had to confide in an editor, here's what Tom Schweik's going to talk about at 2.30, you need to get a reporter there. And within 30 seconds of me explaining that to a news editor and them recognizing that there was some news here, um, I got a call uh, from a source who told me that uh, um, had, had I heard about Tom. And uh, I thought they were asking about the 2.30 thing, and I, I, I had this very hesitant, strange conversation because I, I didn't know if they were asking about the off-the-record 2.30 meeting that I knew about that nobody was supposed to know about, and, and it turns out, no, they were trying to pass on information to me that uh, that he had shot himself and was dead. So so when so the timeline here when when you got the voicemail message um, he had already uh, he was already rushed to the hospital. You had no idea. You pick up the message like you would on any normal day. You then bring that to the newsroom only to find out moments later uh, that he had shot himself. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got the voicemail at 9:41. But I didn't listen to it at the time. I was speaking to a group of middle school students, and I saw the phone call come in. Uh, Tom would would block his number, so it would always show up as unknown caller. Um, and I was pretty sure it was Tom based on our conversations this week. And I saw the phone ring, and I I let it go. And I saw that I had a voicemail. And uh, when I was done with the students, I listened to it and. Uh, and, you know, at the time, the voicemail was not surprising to me at all based on our previous conversations this week. 
I knew he was planning on holding a news conference. I knew he was planning on revealing the information that, that he had been sharing with me. And uh, so, so at the time, the, the voicemail was, was not surprising at all. And it was uh, pretty chilling yesterday when you find out it was, it was seven minutes before he, uh, or even perhaps even less, before right. he killed himself. In, in your statement uh, that you uh, prepared and have put on the website, stltoday.com, you, you explain or sort of uh, talk about your reasoning as to making a statement and then releasing uh the the uh voicemail take us take us through your your thought process as to why you ultimately released the voicemail sure uh well the 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 irony is i i actually typed two statements to the newsroom the the first one uh before we knew he was dead um was just simply a confirmation that I received a call from him this morning, uh, and this is what the voicemail said. I transcribed it, typed out, you know, what the voicemail said. Um, and I thought that it was important for the newsroom to know that because that context, that he was planning a 2.30 news conference to discuss something, um, was, you know, potentially valuable at that time in, in, in terms of, news information um and there was nothing particularly off the record about that in, in the sense that he was going to hold a news conference and he was going to going to uh, go public with some information so the, the the very first thing that i that i typed out in the morning was just that information and just the the contents of the voicemail um and then he died and uh before he died I, I had no intent of revealing any of our uh, off-the-record information until at that point that, you know, he made it public. Um, and uh, when he died, then it was time to have uh, a more difficult uh, ethics discussion about uh, uh, my responsibilities. And so I actually did several things. I called David Lee first. Um, because I've known David for a long time, and he's a very good journalist, and I knew that we were the only two people in the world in that situation right now. Um, and so we we briefly had a discussion about what our initial thoughts were, um, uh, just relating to uh, what what we planned, what we would likely plan to do in terms of, of our responsibility on revealing information. And neither of us had made a decision. Um, and uh, we both agreed that we needed to talk to some more journalists and talk to our bosses and all of those sorts of things. And so uh, then I had a discussion with our editorial board, and I had a discussion with uh, Gilbert Bailon, the editor of the paper, and, and you know, we just we, we explored the, the pros and the cons and, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the ethics of revealing information that, um, uh, that was, you know, spoken in confidence. Yeah. Um, and uh, came to the conclusion that it was the right thing to do. You're, uh, you, as you said, you're the editorial page editor of the St. Louis Post Disp Dispatch. You're not a mental health expert, and so we we find ourselves in this situation where dealing with facts and then sort of superimposing what, when, why, and how. Here's a man who, but from all accounts, wasn't um, acting like he was getting ready to take his own life planning on a 2.30 news conference, so much so calling you saying, hey, make sure you have somebody there, and then moments later taking a gun and taking his, his life. It seems like a total disconnect. It does, but, you know, in, 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 my, in my reporting life, having reported uh, previously on, on suicides and having some understanding of, of, of mental health issues and not knowing... What, what particular demons Tom uh, had, assuming that he had some, uh, as it relates to uh, deciding to take his life, um, I, I don't think it's uncommon for people even very close to people who have taken their lives to not know what's going on. Uh, I, I spoke to a friend of mine last night uh, who was an attorney. Uh, whose uh, husband had taken his life 
Um, and she said, there's just, there's nothing that prepares you for the shock of it. And, and, and there's no way to, uh, to know what's going on in uh, a person's mind. Uh, and, and, and often, often they just, you know, they're able to hide uh, the, the signs of, of, of whatever, you know, issues they may or may not be dealing with. So um, I, I know a lot of people who knew Tom, and, and Tom had a, a reputation for occasionally flying off the handle, for, uh, of, uh, you know, occasionally having some, some, some odd personality traits that, that would raise people's questions a little bit about um, whether or not there was something a little off in him. But, but I never heard anybody talk about him in the way that, that uh, would lead me to believe he was somebody who was going to take his life, and it, it, that, that was just a shock. Yeah, so now the Republican Party finds themselves in a very precarious situation. Uh, one of their uh, gubernatorial candidates has, has now died, makes these allegations. These allegations are now sort of out there um, and sort of swirling around. Now they have to deny, deal with this, allegations from a man who has since since killed himself. It finds a lot of Republicans in a very strange situation. It's, it's a tough spot, and uh, um, I know some of them aren't, aren't, uh, aren't happy with me for, for sharing the information that I shared in the column and, and presumably with David Lee sharing the information he shared uh, in his story. Um, but the, the, the irony is uh, they were dealing with it for a few days before Tom's death. I mean... Um, John Hancock and his wife went to the Capitol on Tuesday to actually prepare uh, to upstage um, Tom's news conference that he was going to hold on on Tuesday, but didn't. Um, so it's 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 a very strange situation, uh, and it's and it's tough. I've known John Hancock longer than I've known uh, Tom Schweik. Um, He's very mad at me right now, and uh, um, I, I like John, and, and, and I have always had honorable dealings with John. Uh, but here's the, here's the important thing. John confirmed what it was that Tom Schweik said to me about John, and, and, and I want to be clear about the details there. Tom never told me John's an anti-Semite. And I don't believe he is. I've, I've never found anything in, in my dealings with John Hancock to think that he's a bigot. But, but here's what, John Han- what Tom told me John Hancock said. Tom said that John Hancock told donors he was Jewish. Now, John may have believed that. Um, he may have been in a conversation in which he found that to be an appropriate area of something to discuss. Um, but Tom thought it was his intent was ill in terms of having that conversation. And that's a conversation that I believe took place. And that was one of the reasons why I relayed the information that I did, because, uh, I believe in, in John Hancock's own words, that it was accurate information in terms of the way that, that, that I relayed it. Um, and that, that gets very complicated to talk about without using very careful words, uh, about what somebody said or didn't say, and then trying to apply what they said or didn't say to their intent. Um, and that's a complicated place for John to be right now. And I, I respect that. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what happens next. Yeah, it's a complicated situation for all of us to be in, including you, which was thrust in the middle of this story through no through no fault of your own. But that's what's so insidious about a whisper campaign, and that's what's so insidious about the allegation of a whisper campaign. If you talk to people who are around Jay Kanzler when he was running for auditor against Claire McCaskill, they will tell you that he lost his Republican primary because there was a whisper campaign that people claimed he was Jewish. So it's happened in the past. I'm sure it'll happen in the future. And so 
it, was it true? Was it not true? How do you prove something that's that's sort of on the fringe there, whether it actually happened or not? Well, and this is this is why Tom wanted to go public about it because he he was offended that he knew that his party had a history of this sort of thing, and he didn't want to see that continue in his party. And he he was the the one thing I know about Tom uh, in, in in my discussions with him and and. You know, you can search the archive. I probably wrote more negative things about him than positive. Uh, but we maintained a, 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 a good relationship because I, I, I think we were able to sort of figure out that, that we weren't lying to each other. And, you know, he was deeply offended by, by, by what was going on or at least what he perceived was going on. He, he wasn't just off on a off on a tangent trying to uh, um, make something up to gain some sort of political advantage. He, he was deeply offended uh, and angry. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, if it's at all related to why he died at a much higher level than I'll ever understand. Yeah, Tony Messenger, editorial page editor of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Tony, thanks for, uh, thanks for checking in on a very busy day. And, thanks, uh, McGraw. You got Appreciate it. it. We'll talk to you down the road. Tony Messenger here uh, with us. All that stuff is at stltoday.com, his statement and uh, the audio. We'll have the audio up uh, as well as we will uh, have this interview with Tony so you can go back and listen to what Tony said because it is very nuanced. It is very important. And uh, Tony picked his words very carefully, purposely, so that he could uh, convey the story as accurately uh, as possible. 836.